Evening, everyone. Um, well, well done for coming along, for, for coming and opening your minds to, to the inspiration. And I'm going to give you the tools to, to go away and turn this into action. Um, I have to clarify a few points. I, I'm not a businessman. I, I, I do business, but I, I'm, I'm not very good at it. And, and guerrilla gardening is absolutely not my business. Um, I mean, it's my business, but not my business, if you know what I mean. And, and that, this is really relevant for you guys, because what this means is that you can join me. You can become guerrilla gardeners as well, and you don't really need to give up much yet. Not to start with, anyway. It might draw you in, and who knows where it may lead. But this is, this is about an additional uh, hobby. Think of it as a hobby. Um, and that's, that's what it certainly was for me at the beginning. Um, yeah, nearly 10 years ago, although a correction, I didn't invent guerrilla gardening. I, I, I must give credit either to a 17th century English radical who um, has since been commemorated outside the Kremlin at the beginning of the last century. That's a very long story, which is for another day, uh, or the book. Um, and the term guerrilla gardening actually dates back to the 1970s to New York. And this incredible uh, legacy of what guerrilla gardeners were doing back then when, when New York was in a bit of a state. And uh, that's partly what guerrilla gardening is about. It's about seeing opportunities and just going out there and doing it. So what is guerrilla gardening? For those of you who don't yet know, guerrilla gardening is the illicit cultivation of someone else's land. You're not asking permission first. And the amazing thing is, is that London is a blank canvas. There is so much that we can be doing um, and, and not getting into serious trouble for it at all. So if you think back to what Arthur was talking about at the beginning, you know, let's plant up this city. Well, Absolutely. You know, don't let bureaucracy get in the way. Really, don't. We've, we've done the groundwork. We've proved that you can get away with it um, if you follow a few, a few pragmatic tips. Um, so I've got, I've got a few photos, which I'll, I'll, I'll show you. Um, they're an interesting selection. But I thought, I'm not going to edit this. I'll, let's see what Innocent reckon. So I gave them a, a, a Dropbox code. So pick what you like. So this is the Innocent selection of Guerrilla Gardening, which I'll reveal in a minute. And then underneath your chairs, is not your pudding, um, it is the starting point for making some seed bombs. So this is kind of entry level guerrilla gardening. So we're going to get onto that in a moment, but if you look under your chairs, you will see that there's the starting of some illicit ammunition here. This is, a, this is an arms factory this <laughs> evening, an innocent arms factory. So um, let's reveal what we've got here. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, well, this is me. In, in the younger days, uh, it, it, it proves a point. This is nocturnal. Now, guerrilla gardening doesn't have to be nocturnal. You may have seen you know, the YouTube films and the like. It's often done at night. It's convenient. It's when I'm home from work. It's when you're more likely to bump into your neighbors. And, and if you're guerrilla gardening, that's, it's, you know, it's a conversation starter. This is something I didn't realize at the beginning when I was doing it at 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, the social side of it was very much not on the agenda. I just wanted to, to transform this grotty patch of land outside the tower block where I lived. Um, and, and hence the early days, very illicit. But now I'm brazen. Full daylight, you know, no disguise. Um, and if anyone gives me grief, I just go, well, I planted that. I planted that tree, those raspberry bushes, those petunias. Mine, or my mates, or someone else's. So. Um, this is the thing, it can, it can, it, from, small, from small steps can, can bigger acorns grow or whatever the expression is. Um, ah, okay. So this, this is a very floriferous little guerrilla garden, um, a, a relatively modest effort in scale. You know, this is probably equivalent to what a typical Victorian terrace house might have at the front. Uh, and in fact, for me, in a way, this is my front garden because this is the only guerrilla garden that I can actually see from my flat. Um, this is the centre of the Elephant and Castle roundabout. She probably passed through on a bus or risked your life on a bicycle. Um, and, and it's a pretty boring space. It's actually some good trees on there. There's a lot of grass. And, and again, thinking back to Arthur's vision of London, that grass, I mean, waste of space. Grass is the tarmac of the horticultural world. It's, it's a gas guzzler. Because all it's there, I mean, it's good for soaking away rainwater, we'll give it that credit, but it's really, you know, you're not going to lounge around on that grass in the middle of the roundabout. So I'd like to one day see the whole thing dug up and, and, and cultivated. Um, bit too filthy for the time being for many edibles here. So this is why we've got a lot of tulips, 
We've got some sedum, which is very good, doesn't require much watering, very, very bee friendly. And um, the hooker are there, which grows well in the, it's in a dry, shady position underneath the tree here. Um, there's all sorts of lavender, we've got some uh, uh, pot marigolds, the calendula, which you saw earlier. They're, they're brilliant for gorilla gardening because they self seed like crazy and they, they attract uh, a lot of good bug life. And yeah, if you want, you can eat them too. This is a, this is a contentious location because this is the one time in my nine and a half years of doing this that I was threatened with arrest. Now, I don't want, I don't want that to put you off. In some ways, I'm sorry that this picture was selected, but, um, <laughs> but it has to be said. Um, but, but I have no criminal record. I didn't even accept a caution. Um, this, this was just uh, a situation we walked away from. It was put down your tools or we're taking you in. And, and you can watch it all on YouTube. It was all captured by, by both The Guardian and a Swedish children's TV program called Anaconda. And I think partly it was the, 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 the cavalcade of cameras that, that alerted the police. So if you, if you avoid the media, then you're more likely to get away with it. But um, the media is actually, of course, very powerful because what they've done by reporting on this is, is normalize it. It's made people think, oh, it sounds fun. Oh, I can have a go with that. Look, you know, um, that woman off Country Fell, she's got away with it. That's, it must be all right. Um, she, she helped. Well, she had some trouble with the police as well, but um, that was for other reasons. She, she did some guerrilla gardening here too, which was very helpful. So um, that's thriving. That, that looks better today than it does in that photo from last year. It seriously does. Um, that that, that guerrilla garden is now five years old. Five years old. Um, this is a more uh, modest um, action, and this is what I call pimping pavements. This is, this is a campaign I launched in, in 2010, realizing that some of the, the roundabouts and traffic islands that we'd been doing were, 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 were great, but, but a bit, bit more than most people could bite off, really. So I thought, well, we need bite size, you know, snackable gorilla gardens. And, and that's what Pimping Pavements is. London is full of tree pits. And whilst a lot of them have gravel and sand in, you, you can, if you're lucky, dig that out. And if you're even luckier, if there's a new tree there, the chances are there'll be some pretty good soil. And, and by cultivating it, bearing in mind you've got to, you know, don't dig through the tree's roots, um, you're actually going to help the tree as well. You need to be careful not to raise the soil level too high, but by you, you watering it, giving it decent amounts of water, you're going to be helping that, that young tree, which too often in London actually gets neglected. You see a lot of these young planes desperate because they've been planted with uh, you know, good intentions, but then not looked after. So here we are. Um, it's a bit of a kind of flower show. Um, th this, I will confess, we were planting up because we were about to have a royal visit. Um, the, the Duchess of Cornwall um, went on a, a bus ride. I, I did a, a bus ride tour for her a couple of years ago around the Elephant and Castle. The Sun reported it as Camilla the Gorilla, <laughs> which, which for me was just a fantastic... I thought, this is great. You know, I had a preamble. I mean, this is a, a tangent now. I'm just showing off. But I had a preamble at St. James's Palace about you know, what we would, we would be doing here. And I said, you know, we don't have any written agreement for this. I do hope that's OK. And they went, I don't think that will be a problem. So great. We basically we haven't quite got the royal stamp, but we've got the royal um, nod of approval and, and some harvesting. So we were planting this up in a, in a rather showy way. I wouldn't recommend that. This is high risk. Um, for, for potential, you know, pinching. Um, it's better if the garden kind of creeps up a bit. And actually, that's what the seed bombs are very good at. You know, plant something relatively uh, modest. Make it look like it's been cared for, because neglect is your biggest risk. If it looks neglected, it could be, you know, well-meaningly hacked by a cleaner or, um, or pooped upon. That's, that's one of the problems. Um, but one of the charms as well, you get to meet the dog life and their dog owners and have a you know, constructive conversation about it. Um, and what have we got here? Oh, there, yeah, okay, this is, this is some pavement pimping in action, another, another portrait there. Um, this is a local resident uh, who actually recommended that we, we did this area. And, and funnily enough, this, was the, this is not guerrilla gardening, actually, although, although it looks like it. This was the first time I'd actually got permission beforehand. Um, it's an experiment um, initiated here by my friend Claire. And you'd think that would mean it was probably even you know, more secure and, and more likely to flourish and perhaps even be funded or something. 
Um, but it was a complete disaster. This is, the, this is the only time I've planted in the street in Southwark uh, in, in the last four years and, and had it destroyed. Um, I mean, to, to be fair, Southwark did warn us that if you plant here, um, even though we'll give you permission, our cleaners will probably destroy it. And sure enough, they did. Um, so it, it, for me, it was just another reminder of permission counts for absolutely nothing. Um, just, just go out there and do it, and um, chances are you'll, you'll, you'll do fine. Um, so well, well, let's, yeah, we'll leave that one up. We'll leave that one up. So what have I got here? This, this is where the business um, efforts, shall we say, they're not hugely successful, but um, they, they, they help us get by. Um, as I said, I, guerrilla gardening for me is a hobby, and, and although I do spend now a lot of time talking about it and doing it and travelling and meeting guerrilla gardeners around the world who are doing it, I'm, I'm back to Poland in a, in a few weeks, which is, is really dynamic. Warsaw is, oh wow, that's really going places. And northern Italy, Bologna. I had a gathering in Bologna um, in May of guerrilla gardeners from 10 different Italian cities, and they'd organised to get together and do some mass planting throughout, throughout Bologna, which is a brilliant city, big student population there. So it's, it's kind of young scene. You know, and, and then uh, the next day there was a conference that they'd organised discussing strategies. It was, nothing like that's ever happened here. Um, but uh, yeah, when I'm not travelling around, I, I, we, we do try and raise some money. And this, which you might even be able to smell, is uh, a lavender pillow. And this comes from the, the biggest uh, guerrilla garden that, that I tend, which is in the centre of a road junction just near Lambeth North, just near the Tube. Um, it's so big and so colourful that a local councillor said to me, I don't know what your, you know, what your issue is around here, Richard. You know, the council does wonderful things like this great lavender field. I said, no, Geoffrey, no, 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 no. I've got the evidence that that's our work. Anyway, we, we planted a lot of lavender there because it's a brilliant, it's a brilliant plant. Uh, it's very low maintenance, which helps if you're taking on a big area. Uh, it looks good all year round. You know, it doesn't go too twiggy, which means it might be vulnerable in the winter to being cleared away because people would assume it was dead. It obviously smells good, looks good, very, very nature friendly. You know, the bees love it. And the issue with bees is they need the food. There are plenty of beekeepers in London now, but they, 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 the bees need as much um, pollinating plants as you can get. And it turns out lavender is a great cash crop. And while it wasn't our intention, we realised you do actually have to harvest lavender every year. You, it, it benefits from being cut back quite hard at the end of the summer. So for seven years now, on bank holiday August weekend, about sort of ten of us get together and, and chop it all back. I, I dry it out either in the flat or I, I, I book in my car for a repair and it's and it laid out on the garage floor on some tarpaulins. And, um, and then we, we, we make these lavender pillars. Um, my wife, who is um, in an ethical, ethical fashion actually, so there's a connection there, works for trade, just give them a plug. Okay. She, she knows about this sort of stuff. And, and so she leads the Gorilla Gardening Haberdashery Division. And uh, the fabric of this year's pillows, this is just turning into a plug now, isn't it? The fabric from this year's pillows, um, it also has my wife and I on it. Um, we, we met uh, at the Lavender Field six years ago. Um, so it, that's what Gorilla Gardening can lead to, see? <laughs> it's brilliant. Um, so, like, well, let's get to work, let's get to work. Um, I've got a few bits and pieces here to show you what's already been done for you by the, the busy bees of the Innocent team. And what they've done is, in these very nice, um, I think they're bamboo fibre recyclable bowls, um, is mix some clay dust and some mushroom compost together. Now, to just to explain what's, why, why we've used those, what, what's good about the clay dust is that it will bind it together to make your seed bomb, but also clay actually attracts nutrients. It's, it's charged electrically. And, it, and, it, and a clay soil is, is nutrient rich, it holds on to them. Um, this is, you can see in the bucket here, this is, this is from a pottery supplier. So this is, this is the only bit of specialist, um, specialist ingredients, and you, you can buy that in bulk. I've, I've got a sack that's lasted me about six years. Um, and then the, the other ingredient is, is less specialist. As I said, I've got mushroom compost here. Um, this is in your bowl already. Smells really good. This is this is a, a kind of byproduct of the mushroom growing industry. Um, you could just use any old compost. You know, avoid 
the ones with peat in because that really isn't good for the planet. Um, or just some mud, you know, just dig something up from the ground. But that, that's just to, to give it some organic matter. And then a little bit of water. So somewhere in the room is water. So um, have a look for it. <laughs> uh, so uh, there will be some assistance, I'm sure. We'll be pointing out where, where, where your water is. What you need to do is pour a bit of that into your bowl and with the spoon stir it around. Um, you, it's a bit like making... Well, a bit like making pastry, you don't want to get it too wet. If anything ever goes wrong with um, seed bomb making it, it just goes a bit too sticky. Uh, and then, of course, the all-important seeds. So I'm just going to, going to get my clay in and the compost. Is water emerging? Yeah, water. I'm, I'm looking, looking around. Uh, yeah, water's coming through in that oh, there we go. Brilliant. <laughs> I was going to say, otherwise use a smoothie. But that would, that would be a little extravagant. Um, <laughs> So, okay, so we've got that. Now, the seeds. Well, what I've brought with me today is a very diverse option. So there's something for everybody here. You can either go for mint. Now, okay, you know, make a mojito from it, you know, put it on your potatoes. That's your edible option. And mint's actually a really good guerrilla gardening plant because it, 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 it's pretty aggressive. It's quite rampant. It's the kind of plant that if you're putting in your own garden, you want to keep in solitary confinement or otherwise it will take over. Um, so we've got, we've got a lot of mint, and that's in, that's in the little packets, because mint seeds are tiny, they're almost just, just like dust. So if anyone wants mint, if you just take that, pass it around, just take a sachet. Um, we've also got uh, some zinnias. Anyone know what a zinnia is? Puzzled faces. You'll recognise them if you see them. They're a, they're a classic cut flower. They, they look like they belong on a 1970s or an all Achille wallpaper. They're, they're very blousy, bright pink, bright orange. These ones are called Aztec Sunset. Um, so we've got some zinnia seeds. I've just, there's, there's loads in here. Again, they're very small, but they're a bit more visible than the, uh, the mint. So I'm going to pass that jar around. You could just mix, you can mix them all up. You could go mint zinnia, go crazy. Um, and then in here, in here is a gorilla gardener's favourite. The, uh, the sunflowers. So we, I've, I've, we've got more sunflower seeds than we know what to do with. I had a very kind donation. Um, so, yeah, we'll pass these jugs around. And actually, at the end, when, you, when we have break time, um, I've got some cups. Just come and stock up on sunflowers. And while, while you pass these around, in terms of quantities, don't worry about it. Just don't drown them in sunflower seeds, or otherwise it won't stick together. But you can't really go wrong. Um, so yeah, while, while, while you're doing that, I'll just tell you a bit about what Gorilla Gardeners do with sunflowers. For, for six years, May the 1st has been International Sunflower Gorilla Gardening Day. Declared by the Brussels Gorilla Gardeners, who go by the name of the Brussels Farmers. And over the years, depending on how um, friendly Facebook is to mass mailing, they keep changing the system, which is annoying, We've had uh, up to 6,000 people sign up to, to this day as an event they're going to participate in. And, um, and this year it's going very well. We had this year, um, well, thousands, and the weather's been very kind. So down the old Kent Road, Elephant and Castle, a lot of sunflower seeds um, germinating. So if anyone's short of seeds, let me know. I've got, I've got a lot more here. And then stir it around. And when it, when it feels like it's kind of binding a bit, then this is when really you, sh you should get your hands dirty, OK? There's, there's the opportunity for washing them in lovely buckets of water outside. But, but you want to um, bind it into either one big golf ball or snooker ball size, or perhaps there's even more in there to make a tennis ball size seed bomb. Or if you want, you could make really small ones, little kind of seed pellets. It really doesn't matter. Um, People ask me, they ask me, you know, what's the best size? I go, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's a very experimental uh, form of ammunition. I had a student inquire a few weeks ago about it. I said, why don't you do a, you know, do a thesis on it? Let's, let's get the evidence. Let's do the science. But um, I've had people make them into all sorts of funny shapes and sizes. You, your imagination is your only limit. Oh, you, you, you've got mega, have you? Okay. Now the, the thing about seed bombs is 
is that they are more suitable to some times of the year than others. And I'm going to confess here that what we are in the middle of June is, is a little bit late, just a bit, for, for the uh, viability, as they, as they call it in the gardening world, the viability of your seeds to, to succeed this year. But I'd say, hey, give it a go. The Met Office say the weather's gone mad, so the seasons might look kindly on us and you might still get some sunflowers growing this year. I've had sunflowers blooming in London in, in, in deepest, darkest November. London is brilliant for gardening because it's actually quite mild. So if the, the rains continue, you might, you might well do well. But ideally, you'd be showing seed bombs in, in, in late autumn and early spring. OK? So that, that's about it. Um, take, take, take your bowls away. Take your seed bombs away. Throw them wherever you like. The ideal situation will be some kind of open soil. But the idea is that there's enough within this for it to be able to to germinate itself and, and to at least start taking root. But if you see a tree pit like this, you know, give it a go, or, or, or even into people's gardens. I mean, just, <laughs> you're doing them a favor. You're doing them a favor. Um, maybe not with the mints, that might be a little bit, a little bit mean. And, and as I said, if anyone wants any more sunflower seeds, you know, take them away. Um, they'll keep for next, next April and May the 1st and um, I, I would like to leave here today with that yellow tub empty. Thank you very much.